Welcome to the introduction to Gigapixel AI. I'm gonna be working in a clockwise direction, so we'll be starting with the preferences at the top and then move our way along from the top to the right and then the bottom. Now I'm using a Mac for this video, but everything that I talk about is pretty much the same on Windows, so you shouldn't experience any differences. So let's start with the preferences for Gigapixel AI. The first set of options allow you to customize the file name. So the first field allows you to specify text for the prefix or the beginning of the file name. And then the second field allows you to add anything to the suffix or after the file name. By default, we'll add a dash gigapixel to make it easier to show you that the photo was edited in this app. Next, there's an option to add the scaling mode to the file name. The next two options only apply when you're using Gigapixel AI as a standalone application. In other words, you're not sending your photo to Gigapixel from Adobe Lightroom Classic or Photoshop. And the first option tells us to add a lens correction profile based on the metadata of the photo. The second option only applies if you send a RAW or DNG file into Gigapixel through a standalone workflow. When available, we'll apply a camera specific DCP profile to your photo. If you don't want this to be applied, just disable this option. And remember, if you send your photo from Lightroom Classic or Photoshop, this will not apply. Next, you have the option for us to anonymously collect data on how you use this application. This information is never shared or sold. It just helps us improve Gigapixel AI for you. After that, you have the option to disable tooltips. And a tooltip is this little question mark icon. And when you hover over it, you'll get a little bit more information about the option or tool. After that, you have the option to enable or disable auto update preview. When enabled, anytime you change a model, a resize scale factor, or one of the sliders will automatically process the preview for you. If you disable it, you'll have to manually click on the update preview button to see the processed version. Next, you can select the color of your background to make your image pop more easily. And then you can specify whether you want the control panel on the right or the left. And by default, it's on the right. Moving down, the next option is one of the most important ones to pay attention to, and that's the AI processor. You'll want to make sure that it's set to auto, and that'll tell us to select the best options based on your computer hardware configuration. If you have CPU selected, we highly recommend you try auto to get even better performance. And then finally, you have the ability to download models in advance. This is something you might want to consider disabling if you have very slow internet connectivity. And that's it for the preferences. Along the top, you have the ability to change your zoom factor. If you drop down, you'll see some presets as well as a slider. If you slide to the right, you'll zoom in. And if you slide to the left, you'll zoom out. Next to that is the original button. Clicking on that will show you the original version of your photo. And when you let go, you'll see the processed version return. After that is your view dropdown. You have four options to choose from. The default is single view. Next is split view, which will show you your original photo on the left of this bar and the processed photo on the right. You can also click on this bar and drag to the left to show more of the processed version and drag to the right to show more of the original version. After that is the side by side view, which will show you your entire original photo on the left side of the screen and the processed version on the right side of the screen. And finally is comparison view. In comparison view, you can compare up to three different AI models in their own quadrants. Your original photo will be in the top left quadrant, and then you can select which models are displayed in the remaining three. One thing to note is that you don't have to have three different models in each quadrant. Let's say I wanna have one version of low resolution in this quadrant, and then another version here with different slider settings here. I'll go ahead and click on low resolution, and you can see that both of these quadrants now have low resolution. If I click on this quadrant, you'll see that it has these slider values. And then when I click on the one below it, it has different slider values. So this gives you the ability to really refine the look of your model based on the image that you're working on. And you can always revert back to another model just by clicking on it. Now let's go back to single view to continue. On the right toolbar, at the very top, you'll have your navigator. Navigator will always show you your entire image and it makes it easy to pan around when you're zoomed in. So let's say I zoom in here to 200%, you'll see the entire image in the navigator as well as a focus box. You can click on the focus box and drag around if you wanna pan, or you can also click in the image and move around to pan as well. 
If you want to see your entire image in the preview area, just click on the zoom dropdown and select the zoom to fit. Below the navigator, you have the ability to crop your photo. If you click on the crop button, you can specify an aspect ratio of your choice and fine tune it by specifying a width and height value. To commit your crop, click on the blue apply button at the bottom, or if you don't want to crop, just click on cancel to return back to the main screen. Next, you have the ability to control the upscale factor, and you have three options here. First, you can use a series of presets under the scale button. You can see by default, the presets are half a percent if you want to downscale, two time, four time, or six time. You can also click on this custom preset button to specify a value of your choice. Additionally, you can choose to specify a maximum width in pixels or a maximum height in pixels. You can also control the unit between pixels, inches, and centimeters. For this image, I'm gonna go back to scale and select 6X. Next, you can choose which AI model you wanna use for your upscaling. There are five to choose from, and they are standard, lines, art and CG, low resolution, and very compressed. The easiest way to compare these AI models is to use the comparison view. Below that, you have your settings for each of the models. First, you'll see an auto toggle. If you enable it, that'll tell Gigapixel AI to analyze the photo and choose the best settings. You can always override these settings to suit your taste. Below that, you'll have a few additional settings. And the first one is a reduced color bleed, which will help achieve a more uniform color throughout your photo. And then you have face refinement. And this is ideal when you're working on a photo with smaller faces, like in a crowd, for example. You can hover over the tooltip to get more information about both of these options as well. On the bottom right corner of the preview area, you'll notice two icons, a smiley face and a neutral face. This gives you the ability to indicate to us whether you're happy with the results or not so happy with the results. This information that you share with us is completely confidential and it only helps to improve our AI model. So we thank you in advance for participating. Along the bottom below the preview area, you'll see a bunch of information related to the processing of your photo. First, you'll have your file name followed by the original resolution of your photo. After that, you'll have the crop factor. And in this case, we're upscaling by a factor of six, which will result in the resolution after that of 6,000 by 9,000 pixels. And at the end, you'll see a summary of the options that you're gonna be applying to this process. You'll see the AI model that you selected, followed by the slider values and the additional setting options. When you're done processing your photo, all you have to do is click on the Save Image button. And you'll be presented with options about the file that you're gonna output. You can specify the image format, as well as the quality, the file name, the color profile, and where you wanna save the photo. If you select source, the output file will be saved in the same folder as the original file. And selecting custom allows you to choose where you wanna save the file. When you're done, just click save to commit those changes. You should now have a much better idea of how to use Gigapixel AI to upscale your photos, and we hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much.